would make this an extraordinary conversation for you today? Um, just um, going over some LSAT basics right now, the most important to me is reading comprehension as of right now. Um, but I'm taking this test on this upcoming Monday, so I've been steadily approven. Uh, Khan Academy has been a good help to that. Uh, and this, and I've been receiving your emails ever since I started over the summer. Um, so yeah, thank you for that, by the way. Yeah, yeah, of course. What are some of your biggest reading comprehension struggles right now? Um, so at first it was the time, um, but right, right now it's mostly social science passages and uh, law passages. Um, by the fourth passages, my brain just kind of seems kind of drained. <laughs> And then, um, so the time limit, I, I used to not be able to get even to the last, like, reading comp section, but now it's, like, the last couple section, last couple questions um, that I'm rushing through. Okay, well, it's great that you've had some improvement already. What is your current reading comprehension approach like? Um, so I, I just start off by reading. Um, I just read the whole thing through. Um, and it's, you can't really annotate on the new online version. Um, so I'm just highlighting, like, keywords. Um, and then kind of just trying to figure out the viewpoints of each paragraph um, and then trying to find the main conclusion. Sure. sure. Well. So yeah. the approach seems to be working for you on the natural science, but why do you think it's not working for you on the other types? Um, I feel like the law or for law, this is the abstract language, um, just a bunch of maybe words that I don't fully understand. And it, just even that little time going back in the paragraph, just to read like the context around it so I understand the word. Um, that's what, like, I think the time, that little time adds on to a bunch of time, and that's maybe why I can't finish on time. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, yeah. I don't want to give you a totally radical approach because you are studying, you're taking the exam in a week from now. So yeah. I don't want to <laughs> recommend anything too big in terms of an overhaul, but I will give you a little bit of advice on reading comp just to engage a little bit more okay. and extract those viewpoints. Thank you. Cool. And the idea is really to try and caricature or exaggerate the different viewpoints in the passage. So if it's old versus new or incomplete versus relatively more complete or, of course, mm -hmm. simply right versus wrong. Yeah. If you can okay. attach some sort of exaggeration to each side just to give yourself a better handle on them, then I think it could be a little bit more relatable. As okay. for the abstract language, one drill you might use would be to simply to look up definitions for every word you don't understand. <laughs> yeah. And this applies especially so in logical reasoning where there are questions where all five choices are on abstract language. Yeah. But for reading comp, it would be exaggerate the different sides. Okay, that makes sense. And keep your notations to a minimum because it takes time to mark them down. And of course, you're, to some extent, you're looking back and forth between the scratch paper and the tablet. Mm -hmm. And so for main point, um, questions or not on logical reasoning, but on the, uh, reading comp. Um, I know typically they're either at like the beginning or end of the first paragraph, or maybe the last sentence of the um, the last paragraph. But is there any like tips or how to locate the main conclusion in reading comprehension? Well, it's where the author is expressing their opinion okay. a lot of the time. So any words that are prescriptive in nature, like giving a value judgment, then like something should be the case then that's likely to be the author expressing their opinion, especially if there's a viewpoint where you can't ascribe it to any group or individual. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Sure. What else is going on for you? Um, so for the analytical reasoning or the logic games, I've been, I kind of started, because I started rushing through it, trying to get through the diagram as fast as I can. Um, and then that left me with some struggles later on. So, I mean, I should have been to, took this advice a long time ago, but um, I've, I've started like using the diagram, taking as much time as I need on the diagram first. Um, and then I finally, I scored a, like a 20 out of 23 on my last like practice test on this, on this section. So like it increased tremendously. Um, so is there any other tips you would think based on like diagramming or if there's a question you get stuck on, um, would you recommend like skipping it or skipping a whole, say you're better at mix setups and you are just like normal grouping, um, would you recommend finding that, that specific game in the, um, as you're going through the questions or just go in order through the four? Well, what's your goal score? Um, my goal score is the break, that, the break 160. Okay. Then you're probably going to want to do all four logic games. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to do all four, especially, I mean, you score 20 out of 23, that tells me you have a lot of aptitude for the game section. Yes. And that you should be certainly be doing all four. Okay. 
So should I start with, you said my strongest one is ordering. Should I go through the four and find the ordering first and start with that? Or do you think I should just keep it in the same order as they're given? I want you to do all four games. And that means don't waste time choosing the order in which to do them. Just do them in the order given. There is a general order of difficulty to some extent on games. And so it makes sense to do them in order anyway. Okay. So I would just want you to do all four. And if you get stuck on one particular question within a game, I wouldn't want you to get bogged down in it. I would want you to, at a certain point, just skip it. And one thing you could do a lot of times is, do, if there's a problem that gives you trouble, like let's say it's likely to be a, a global general question, save that to be the last one you do in the game because your previous diagrams may make it easier to solve that, ga- that question in the end. Okay, makes sense. So make use uh, of all those hypotheticals that you're drawing. Okay. Um, so now on to logic ga- or logical reasoning. Um, would you recommend, I've heard different strategy approaches to it. Um, obviously like the difficulty increases as you get on to the, the later questions. Um, so at the beginning, or say you get to like question 10, um, you're having struggles with it. Kind of just kind of what I asked about analytical reasoning. Would you recommend just start or flagging it and then moving on to the next question and coming back to that, coming back to that question at the end? Yeah, totally fine. Totally fine. There is that general order of difficulty, but around question nine or 10, you'll hit, you'll start to hit some tough ones. And so, yeah, flag them, come back to them at the end. Everything's worth the same. So there's no reason to get bogged down in one question. Mm -hmm. And so for numbers, say like one through 10, um, would you recommend that? That's kind of more of like the intuitive question. So you should, you think using your intuition is your best approach to those. Yeah. Um, Trust your, trust your gut on those. I do still want you to go through all five choices, but trust your gut on those. They are as straightforward as they seem. And if you want need to flag some later in the section, totally fine. Because for some reason, like it used to be the later questions I was missing. Now it's the beginning questions I'm missing. So I'm like, I don't know if I'm thinking too much, like thinking too hard about it or what. Um, but like in the last practice test, I think I missed like three of the first 12. And then out of like the last like eight or something, I got all of them. Um, so it's just, it was just kind of interesting to me. Yeah, you're probably overthinking them. I mean, they are as straightforward as they seem. There's not a whole lot of tricks in those first 10. Okay. Cool. Um, so off of LSAT, so I'll, obviously I'm in the, um, the application process stuff right now. Um, so how would you, would you recommend, because um, obviously I haven't gotten a score back or anything yet, but I'm looking to apply to schools with just in mind, like foreshadowing what I believe I'm going to get on the test. Um, so do you believe I should wait, determine what schools to apply to based on my score or just continue on um, with the process and like just apply anyways, even if I'm not meeting like their, their median LSAT range or anything like that? You don't have a whole lot to lose other than the application fee, especially since applications are to a large extent standardized. I mean, you're doing the same personal statement anyway. You're getting the same letters of rec anyway, just like the application fees associated. So I I would work on getting everything together. Then once you get your score back, that may lead you to adjust up or down depending on what the numbers turn out to be. But overall, you want to apply to as many schools as you reasonably can, because that way, if you get multiple acceptances, then you could potentially play them off each other for scholarship money. Uh Uh-huh. And what's your opinion on, say you get into a, a top 50 school or whatever, but they're not offering you that much money opposed to, a, I mean, a, a 50 to 100 school where they're offering you the, the most money, but they're not as, I mean, I guess, you know what I'm trying to say. Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> prestige, I mean, yeah, prestige. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. I mean, prestige <laughs> does matter to a certain extent when it comes to employment opportunities afterwards. There's a lot of factors with school selection, though, because you want to consider like the school's region. Like, are they somewhere that you want to live, somewhere that you would want to practice law after you graduate? And then what's your appetite for taking on student loan debt? I mean, it could be worth it. I mean, to go to a top 14, if you're taking out debt, could still be worthwhile, depending on what you're going to do afterwards. So these are big decisions. It's, It's hard to give you a yes or no answer. It really depends on your circumstances. And you also want to look at particular fields of law, because some schools might be better for the certain, yeah, that's the certain what practice area that you want to have. And you may not even know that area now, but if you do have a particular interest and a certain school is golden for that, that would certainly weigh things in that direction. Okay, yeah, that's, I've been looking at that because right now my mind is sports entertainment. So I've been seeing schools that are um, sports law, entertainment law, stuff like that, and looking at based off of that. So that helps. That yeah, I would sense. also look at the school's employment reports. Like they, they've published outcomes for their graduates on 
how many got jobs afterwards. And so a school at the lower end that offered you a full ride, if no other graduates are getting jobs, that still might not be a good place to go. Yeah, bar pass rates too. Yeah, that's right. another very important thing as well. And so uh, overall, a higher ranked school is better and you could take out loans to get it paid off afterwards, depending. Okay. It's up to you though. It's, it's a big decision. There's no easy answers on that. Yeah. Did you attend law school yourself or you just kind of adapted the coaching role? I you know it's funny. I was going to go to law school, but this hell side thing really took off for me. So I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> What's your, um, this is kind of a little off topic. What's your opinion? Like LSAT based kind of standardized testing based. I just done a lot of research and stuff on the LSAT specifically standardized testing, stuff like that. So do you believe it truly is helpful, a helpful reason in determining if you are, if you should be the one admitted to that school or not, or do you feel like school should take a kind of different approach or different priority rankings from like LSAT GPA or some more like your leadership qualities, then maybe GPA or like LSAT, et cetera? It's a really tough question because it's kind of like what Winston Churchill said, like democracy is the worst form of government except for all the others. Like you don't want to confuse the LSAT as being like a perfect predictor of everything. Yeah. It does have a strong correlation with first year law school grades, but that's about it. And then you mm -hmm. mentioned leadership. I mean, yeah, that's great. But how do you measure leadership? You would put it in a standardized test. Then people would try to game that too. Yeah. The problem with GPAs is that there's grade inflation and different colleges weigh things differently. And like mm -hmm. engineering majors, it's much harder to get a top GPA in engineering than it is in sociology, right? Yeah. yeah. So you don't want to have things be unfair there either. There's really, there's really not a good system. You know, it's yeah. really tough. But yeah, because I can see the unfair in the LSAT, say you're not able to pay for the resources that someone else is able to pay for, like coaching and stuff. So, but like you said, I can see where there's not a per, there's obviously not going to be a perfect system, but there's improvements in everything. So. Yeah, they could, they could definitely improve things. And I think obviously the more holistic, the better. If, they're, if the schools can hire enough admission staff to thoroughly evaluate the yeah. resumes and the personal statements, that would be great. But then there's all sorts of problems with assigning numbers to that because they're always going to assign numbers to things. And yeah. that's where bias comes in. At least the LSAT, there is an objective right and wrong answer. I think they just got to basically make more free resources available for everybody okay. to even the playing field. I think that would be the way to do it. Like give people better prep. Cool. Understand that. Appreciate that. <laughs> sure. Sure. Anything um, else I could help you with today? Uh, maybe resume recommendation. I know each school kind of has different uh, layouts of how long the resume should be or, or such like that. So I guess that's, the questions pertaining to each school, but just any common general recommendations on resume, like how much like experience should you have on there? How much like, um, like work experience or just school things that you did or just anything you think that would pertain to yourself as a law student? Sure. Yeah. So ac your, your law school admissions resume should be academic in nature, meaning that you're putting your school up top and you're making it a little bit more detailed than you would for a work resume. Okay. But you also want to limit it to one page okay? and not playing with the margins too much on that. But really like, unless you had something astronomically special, like that warranted making it beyond one page, <laughs> I would keep it. I would keep it to one page. Everyone wants to be detailed and include everything, but you have to make some tough choices. Yeah. More is not always better. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And then you want to also make sure that your personal statement is not just a laundry list of your resume, but really focuses deep on one or two things. Okay. Cool. Well, I think that is all I had questions for as of now. Um, and then I, email, you're still available over email and such to get in touch with yeah, if I had any further questions. Yeah. yeah, feel free to reach out if you need anything at all. But before we sign off, Isaiah, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, I think the biggest insight I got was um, probably on the reading comprehension section because that's the one I'm struggling with the most. Um, I, like I had the viewpoints and stuff down, but the exaggeration um, and as well as the conclusion part about the, uh, what the, what it's the author's opinion. Uh, it's weird because I learned all these basics like kind of back way back when. And so when we saw someone the other day, um, kind of got to start reviewing the basics again, just because we tend to forget once we get caught up in just trying to find certain things. Um, so just hearing that again was a, was a good refresher for sure. Great. Well, please keep in touch and let me know if I can help in any way as you move forward. Cool. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. 
I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.